first thing I want you to do is just copy down these terms, okay? Just write them down. I am not going to define them for you, okay? Because, and a very important thing to learn to do as a language learner is to predict and to guess about the meaning of words. You do not rely on the dictionary, okay? So I want you, for two minutes, just talk with your neighbor and see if you know any of these words or you have an idea about what they might mean, okay? We're going to watch a short video, short video, a woman talking about consumerism, okay, which she's American, and in America, in the United States, consumerism is a big problem. So she's talking about this problem, okay, and she is going to use all of these terms. So try to pay attention to how she uses these terms to see if they become clear. It's kind of like um, a mother with a two-year-old. It's painful in the immediate moment to set a limit and say, no, it's time mm -hmm. to clean up the toys. The next thing we're going to do is I'm going to give you a sheet that has these same words on it, okay? And on the top part, you're going to match the terms of the words with the opposite, okay? And in the bottom part, you're gonna use these same words, the ones up here in bold, to fill in the blank, okay? So again, use the context from what you learned in the video and what you're starting to think to do it. What's difficult? Which one? To shift, uh-huh. So she says, we need to shift, we need to change. Those are synonyms. We need to shift, we need to change. Mm -hmm. So to shift is to make a change. Mm -hmm. So the opposite of to make a change is to stay the same. Mm -hmm. So a person who learns drive is a person who is very uh, ambitious and focused and has goals and objectives. To face something directly. So I have to come to terms with uh, my addiction to chocolate. <laughs> Meaning I can't keep eating so much chocolate. I have to face the fact that I need to stop eating so much chocolate. Sometimes the road diverts. So here's the main road, and then there's another road that's going this way. So a diversion is you should be on this road, but you go off on this road. So instead of doing your homework, you go to the movies. Uh, okay. Okay, well, um, we're going to watch that video again. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think we'll watch it again. So let's, yeah, let's do that. Okay? <laughs> so that sentence I just said, I want you to write it down as a dictation. Okay, I'm going to say it again. Okay. This is what I said. Okay? These are not words you <laughs> normally see in writing. Yes? But we use them constantly in speaking, okay? <clears throat> so what, can you tell me which words are speaking words, but not writing words? Here. Okay. Um, this is um, okay. Gonna. Gonna, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. 
So? Another yeah. Let's. Mm -hmm. Good. So in English, like Spanish, we have a lot of words that we use to fill time when we're speaking, and they have a name in English. They're called pause fillers, meaning they fill the pauses. Okay. Okay, well, um, yeah, um, mm -hmm. really, really common to hear. And if you use these, you will sound more fluid and you will sound more natural in your speaking. At first, it may be difficult to use them, but they can help you. Because when you're trying to speak and you can't find the word that you need, you can say, um, well, um, so you have more time to think of the word. <laughs> so this time, when you're watching the video, I want you to listen for these types of words. This woman, she's well-educated, she's smart, she's well-spoken, but she uses these all the time, these kinds of words. So you will notice that most people in English use these all the time, and it doesn't sound bad. It doesn't sound like you are not a good, educated speaker of English. It sounds very normal and, and very natural, okay? So circle anytime you hear a word that you think is a pause filler. But like any good addiction, we keep trying more of it thinking more will do better. Um, a little bit of television in the 1950s will keep the kids quiet. Mm -hmm. And do you notice that she repeats things? Yeah. She repeats things. We have to shift, we have to change. Yes, we have to shift, we have to change, we have to grow. That's three ways of basically saying the same thing. In a written text, you don't see that. You can't repeat yourself in a written text. That's bad writing. But in spoken text, we repeat things a lot. So in Spanish, what do you use to do this? Bueno, pues, bueno, no sé, es que, es decir, no? O sea, what's in Spanish, er or okay. So we say um, mm, like you're humming. Mm, okay. So you have these. You just don't know that you use them all the time. Okay. So the next activity. So in pairs, one person is A and one person <laughs> is B. So A is going to explain to B what. Sally Erickson, Sally Erickson is the woman in the video, thinks we are addicted to, okay? And B explains to A why Sally Erickson thinks we are a nation of two-year-olds, okay? But here's what you have to do. You have to use two different pause fillers when you are speaking. So you're going to practice trying to say, um, oh, well, mm, I mean, all of those things. As you're talking, in your explanation, you have to use two, the minimum. Try more if you can. The student who is not talking is going to write down the pause fillers that the other person is using. 